things within heaven. Join us as we take a look at Muscovite Mica, a radioactive protozoan. What you doing? Well, I'm surveying for monazite at a mycopegmatite in Alabama. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Okay, so this is the background. There we go. It's a little high, but it's not that bad. Oh, uh, this is, yeah, this, for this kind of area and terrain, that's, that's normal. Yeah. So now let's see what happens if we put it in that hole, shall we? Oh, first we can look at the pile here and see that we are indeed Pretty high, pulling out radioactive material. Yep. Look at that. Almost 12,000. And one reason that it's high right here is because when we're at the surface level here, you know, the, the radioactive material is within this mass mm -hmm. and it, it's only, you know, hitting the detector from, from this plane basically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but when you put it in a hole like this it's now the detector is now surrounded mm -hmm. on three or four sides um actually five sides here and uh the counts will be much higher so geometry plays a big effect in how this thing reads hmm. neat so okay. even though it's making a, a loud scary noise it's not dangerous um, you wouldn't probably want to sleep next to that for months on end or eat it right or grind it up and breathe it or get it but, in your eyeball you know walking around here and working with it for a few minutes a few hours you know it's not gonna hurt you cool very cool well, all right we're getting into looks like you're starting to kind of hit the sapper light yep so saprolite is really just rock that's weathered in place and retains its kind of shape. So you can have a, something foliated like a schist or something like a nice, and um, it's basically turned to clay, but it hasn't weathered out of place. It's just become softer, but it still holds its old shape. And wow, look at that. Now we're getting some good stuff. Michael Book. Neat. Neato. This is what people mine for. How far back? Oh, this is probably operated maybe in the 30s, 40s. Okay. Yes. This is not next to uh, good enough to keep. Yeah, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat, huh? So, Evan, what were they mining mica for back in the day, anyway? Um, mica was used as a good insulator, both electrical and thermal. <laughs> Um, and in furnaces, there was a type of uh, device called the pyrometer that could measure the temperature oh. of the inside of a furnace, and you needed a mica window for that pyrometer to be able to see through into the furnace, ah. but also not burn up. Interesting. Um, old toaster ovens would have sheet mica with uh, filaments of the uh, resistive heater <laughs> wrapped around it. Um, but it was a good electrical and thermal insulator, basically. Oh, gaskets. Oh, okay. Also gaskets. Huh. Neat. Take a look at what the counter is reading right now. Oh, it's really low. Really low background right now. Huh. Interesting. So, I guess, uh, you know, in this stage of the pegmatite cooling, all the interesting stuff had already yeah. crystallized out. I'm not sure. Precipitated out, yeah. yeah. I would assume so. So, I mean, you see just how dead this area is. Yeah. This is a surveying gamma ray spectrometer and it measures radiation but it's different from a Geiger counter because instead of a Geiger tube that interacts with a you know, mostly evacuated chamber to create a little voltage, this has a crystal in here of thallium doped sodium iodide and when a gamma ray interacts with that crystal, penetrates through this aluminum case, a an immensely small flash of light is created within that crystal and is amplified amplified by a photomultiplier tube also in the instrument and that greatly amplifies the signal uh, it's read by a computer in here and can tell you how many counts per second or how many interactions with gamma rays this unit is seeing per second and the computer is also smart enough to be able to tell how energetic that gamma interaction is, and you can get an idea of what element is decaying to produce that emission. And so it can actually tell you 
if you're dealing with uranium, thorium, or potassium, and some other more interesting elements that might be uh, of interest to the government, whether somebody's working with uh, plutonium or cobalt-60 or stuff like that. But for geologists, uranium, thorium, and potassium are what you're curious about. So like we can see here, if we put it on survey mode, that we can get an idea of the background, which is elevated because we're sitting right above an anomaly here. But as we get it close to the source, the counts are going way up. And uh, mineralogically, this is probably monazite, which is a rare earth phosphate, uh, and, and thorium is substituting in its crystal structure. So the gamma rays here are produced by thorium. Cool. cool. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoyed this episode of Learning Things with Ben and Evan. Stay tuned for the next episode where Ben and Evan explore an old mine shaft.